Junkie just wants a ride. What could go wrong? A few months ago, I decided to drive to my friend's college and stay with him for a few days. I'm a very petite 18-year-old female. My friend Chris is 19 male. His college is a few hours away from where we are from, so neither of us knew the area very well. Chris was a freshman and didn't have a car on campus, so he rarely ventured into his college city and did not know it well at all. This city does not have a good reputation by any means, but I grew up around a similar area and felt prepared. I drove three hours in my old Rave 4 and was super excited to see him. We wanted to catch a train into the closest major city, but wanted some sweet, sweet Dunkin' Donut coffees first. It was a three minute drive from his very nice private school campus. There was no parking lot at the dunks, so we parked on a wide open side street next to a parking garage and some insurance firms. We walked into the dunks and ordered. There were quite a few shady people inside there, a homeless man, some druggies, whatever, nothing we weren't used to. We got our drinks and started walking back to the car. Our train was leaving in 10 minutes. As we turned the corner onto the street my car was on, I noticed the junkies had congregated near the stoop of an insurance firm, about 500 yards from my car, again, whatever. We just passed them and kept walking. All of a sudden we hear a man yell, yo, is that your car? We didn't think he was talking to us and just kept going. Then, the sound of rabid footsteps behind us. I said, is that your car? I turned around and this guy is a foot behind me. He was one of those junkies and was a scrawny white man significantly smaller than Chris. Chris screams, no dude, and we book it. I freaking run, running to my car as fast as I could. This man is screaming behind us, flailing his limbs and our tails. I get to my car door after what feels like a mile of running and curse myself for not having a push button unlock. The dude has caught up to Chris in his face and was repeating, I need a ride. Just give me a fucking ride. It's two minutes away. Give me a freaking ride. Chris keeps repeating how we can't, how we have a train to catch, and this guy is getting increasingly angry. I shove the key into the lock, my hand trembling so much it took me a couple tries. I manage to unlock my car and get in. I'm so shook up, I'm just sitting there, basically shitting myself. I then realize Chris is still outside. Here's where we got lucky. If this dude was in his right mind, he would have realized there's nothing stopping him from opening the rear passenger door when I unlock the car for Chris. I unlock it, Chris opens the door and swings himself inside, I lock the car again so junkie dude has missed the golden opportunity. The guy by this point is screaming, GIVE ME A RIDE! DON'T BE A FUCKING PUSSY! DON'T BE A FUCKING PUSSY! GIVE ME A RIDE! As Chris goes to shut the door, the man grabs the edge, preventing him from shutting it. He's still screaming, and by this point, I'm shitting myself. Chris slams the door on the junkie's hand, probably breaking this man's fingers in the process, and the man recoils, allowing Chris to fully shut the door. The door is shut and locked. We're safe. The man screams a guttural scream, slams a corner of his phone on the window in anger. I'm honestly surprised it didn't break the glass. I put it into drive and hightail it out of there. The area proved itself to be very bad, and there was a stabbing 100 feet away from Chris's campus a few weeks ago. He no longer feels safe and is transferring next year. I have no intent to return to that city, so to the man who needs a ride, it's not me. Crazy junkie that made herself at home in my house. So, this happened around 17 years ago. I was 13 at the time and I was a latchkey kid. I'd basically have a set of keys for the house. I finished secondary school at the time, then make my way home, let myself in, and entertain myself until my parents came home from work. It was one day in the summertime, close when we would break up for holidays. I let myself in as usual and would go straight to the fridge to grab a drink and snack and then on to the family computer to listen to the dreaded dial-up tone to log into MSN and talk to my mates. Even if I'd only just seen them on the walk from home, I was chatting with my friends and got a text from my mom saying my dad was on his way to pick her up from work and they were just nipping shops to grab a few things. This basically meant they would do an impromptu big shop and then I have to come out to bring the bags in. An hour passed and I hear my mom's distinct voice at the front door yelling my name so I put my shoes on get to the door and see my dad's piece of shit red ford fiesta with suspension full to the brim with bags i grabbed about five and ran them into the kitchen fingers having gone numb from the weight i'd accepted when i walked back to the front door there was a random woman standing there holding a six pointer of milk pops in its hand and takes her shoes off and goes and sits on the chairs my mom and dad are bringing in the last bags and i'm like who's this my mom says oh she offered to help i said no but she took the milk and walked in mom said you can go now thanks for the help and the druggie says i'm not going i helped you out i should get paid for the help we all sort of looked at each other like what the heck 
No friggin' chance. Get out of my house. No, I need some money for the work I've done. It was heavy. I didn't ask for your help, so get out of my house. Make me. My mom saw Red. She grabbed her by the collar and threw her straight out the open front door. Get out of my house, you bitch! This crazy off her face lady then spent the next hour shouting that my mom was a bitch outside before stumbling off into the main road to start a fight with a bus. So yeah, crazy drugged up lady. <laughs> Let's not meet again. I was stalked by a jilted junkie hookup. This happened literally a month ago, back in February when my boyfriend and I had decided to try out an open relationship for a little while for various reasons. We live separately in one of the larger cities in the north of middle America, and there's a decently sized population of college students like me to keep the gay community fresh, so I was doing pretty well for myself. One night, I was bored and scrolling through Grindr, looking for an easy hookup, when I got a message from a guy who was barely 800 feet away. He wasn't terrible looking, and I was a little desperate, so I agreed to go to his place. He lives quite literally down the street from me. I can see his building from my window. So I walked over, and he let me up and into his apartment. We made small talk, and I mentioned where I live. Hell, I even pointed out my window from one of the windows in the stairwell. From the first, I thought there was something off about the guy. Not necessarily bad, just different. An odd twitch in his hands when he gripped the banister, the vacancy of his eyes when he smiled. I'm not so cliche as to say he felt evil or anything like that, but I wasn't surprised that after we got to his apartment, the first thing he did was to tell his very pretty and friendly cat to say hello, and the second thing he did was to walk over to the kitchen counter, grab a needle, and shoot up. I hadn't even closed the door behind me. I stood there staring, and he turned around, dropped the needle on the counter, and went, Oh shit, man. Should've asked, you cool with that? Like, I'm not a Christian boy. I have broken into a church while tripping on LSD. I had sex on a headstone back in high school, but I have my standards. So I shook my head mutely, pulled my hat back on, and opened the door to leave. The guy rushed over and put a hand on my shoulder. Yo, I'm sorry, you don't gotta go. We don't gotta fuck. Do you wanna watch some Transformers 3 with me or something like that? Nah, I said bluntly, hustling down the stairs. I bundled up my scarf against the early February chill and hurried back down the street to my apartment. He followed me downstairs barefoot in pajama pants and a t-shirt until I stepped outside into the whipping winds. I turned back briefly to look after a moment and he was still standing there in the doorway, watching me. I didn't have any premonitions of doom or weirdness. I grew up in Missouri. Junkies barely register as odd to me by this point, so I went home and went to bed. Now, you might have guessed, but I'd never seen this dude around the neighborhood before. Truthfully, I hadn't seen most of my neighbors because my neighbors is an odd mixture of white-collar suburbia, college housing, and low-income housing like my paramours building all on one street, so it didn't really register when I started seeing him more. I would leave for work in the afternoon, and he'd be on the other avenue across from my building, strolling along, or he'd cut across my building's parking lot like a lot of the kids in the neighborhood did. A couple times I saw him walking across the campus mall. My apartment building is directly adjacent to my campus, but he'd always swerve to avoid me. Once or twice I noticed him in the grocery store I work at as a barista, but it's the only one within walking distance and he mentioned he didn't have a car. This went on for the entire month of February. Eventually I started noticing he'd always be walking down the street opposite my building when I left for work at my usual time, and he was only ever at the store when I was working. He'd never approach the coffee stand within the store where I work, but he'd look at me. A couple times I noticed him enter, look at me, pretend to shop, and leave without buying anything. I was starting to feel creeped out, but he hadn't done anything yet to make me feel particularly unsafe. One day late February, I worked an early shift. When I got off, I felt a little crazy from a lack of sleep, and I reached my place about 20 minutes before I usually leave for work, and on the corner of the sidewalk opposite me was the guy. He was checking his watch over and over and looking up. I did a bit of brilliant deductive analysis and followed his gaze up to my living room window. Then I looked back down at him. He looked right at me. There was a moment of tension as we stared each other in the eyes. Like I said, this dude didn't give on any evil or dark vibes. I've met people that do. No, what I saw in this guy's eyes and his face was much more human and much scarier. Desperation, loneliness, pain, anger. 
He harried after me, but I'm 6'3 and a former sprinter, whereas he was a 5'8 junkie wearing flip-flops on ice. I made it to the first set of doors to my apartment, scanned myself in through the second, and locked them behind me. He walked through the unlocked first set, tried to open the second, tried pushing the handicap button to open them, and then gave up. Look, man, I'm sorry, he shouted, laying a hand on the glass of the door. Can we talk about it? I shook my head. Absolutely not. Leave me alone. Then I whirled on my heel and stomped over to the elevator. When I turned back, he was gone out into the snow. I didn't see him for a couple weeks after that, which is nice, because my boyfriend likes to walk down the street past the dude's apartment when he stays over and needs to go smoke. One night, my boyfriend was over at my place. He just got out to smoke before we went to bed, and he mentioned that he wanted me to come with him the next time we went out. Why? I asked, pulling him close to me while he shivered. It's dark and cold and I get paranoid out there sometimes, he mumbled into my chest. There's this creepy dude that sometimes stands on the corner across the way and just stares at the building. One time he asked me for a cig, and I told him I didn't have one when I literally had one in my hand. He laughed, kissed my chin, and passed out. I lay there awake, troubled. When I was sure my boyfriend was deeply asleep, meaning after about five minutes had passed, I extricated myself and went to the window. It was a cold, clear night. I could see across the street, under the orange glow of the streetlight, was the guy. I couldn't make him out clearly, but when he saw me, he waved. I flicked him off and closed the blinds. I didn't feel like I should tell my boyfriend, because he was either going to go immediately to the police, which I hate doing, or he tried to defend me. And while I love him with my entire heart, I didn't want to watch a fight between a junkie stalker and my underweight nicotine addicted boyfriend. So I kept it to myself and still have not told him. But I did start accompanying him when he went out to smoke. The guy was usually outside. Sometimes he'd follow us for a bit before ducking away down a side street. Sometimes he'd watch from a distance. Sometimes he'd be up in his apartment. My boyfriend never noticed. I kept my composure and nothing happened. One night though. We went out so my boyfriend could smoke like normal. When we reached the end of the street and turned around, the stalker was behind us, about 50 feet back. I turned my head to check and there he was. He waved at me again and something told me I had to get back inside. Hey babe, I said to my boyfriend, let's go back inside, yeah? I'm cold. Ah, oh, baby, said, kissing me on the cheek. Alright, I'm almost done anyways. We walked back to the apartment building, and without turning, I knew that the stalker was behind us the entire time. I kept my hand intertwined with my boyfriend's, and kept up the casual conversation we've been having about I how I hate geese. We got back to my apartment, and he got changed for bed while I grabbed some water. But this building has a wired telephone in each unit that rings when someone wants to be let in. Ours never rings unless it's Uber Eats. So my boyfriend was surprised when it started ringing late at night when neither of us had ordered anything. Probably just some asshole playing a prank, I said, unhooking the phone from the wall and putting it in the kitchen cabinet. He accepted that without a struggle, and we laid down in bed. After he was soundly out, I got up, got dressed, grabbed a couple things, and headed downstairs in my thick winter coat. Sure enough, my fanboy was out there in the parking lot. He waved at me and jogged over, smiling broadly. Hey, man! What do you want? I said flatly. Look, man, I feel like we ended things awkwardly last time, and I just, just, just wanted to talk to you, he said. So you stalked me. What? He started to look angrier, his brows furrowing. Nah, man, I, I, I didn't stalk you. I just want to let you know when I could talk to you, but you always avoid me. Now you're walking around here with that skinny little ass bitch boy trying to rub it in my face, and I don't appreciate that, you know? Look, man, he said, smiling again, stepping closer. You want to go talk about this back in my place? Ditch the white boy and come hang with me tonight. Please, I won't shoot up or none this time. He took another step closer to me. I saw in his right hand a dully gleaming piece of metal, a folded up switchblade. He smiled at me and I stepped back, shaking my head. His smile drained away deep into his deep scowl. Bitch, I'm done asking. You coming over to my place now and finish what we started? He growled, unfolding the knife and pointing it at me. This dude was 5'8 tops and skinny. I'm 6'3, 200 pounds, and I lift fucking weights. Also, I had a 12-inch kitchen knife, which I drew from my pocket and leveled it at his throat. He looked at my knife and then back at his and smiled again. Bro, bro, I was just playing. We can just talk right here, bro. I, I don't. Leave me and my boyfriend alone, I said, very quietly, or I will cut your face off and eat it. What the fuck? I spent eight years in juvie for stabbing a kid in middle school. He backed up, putting the knife back in his pocket. I took a step closer, holding my knife level. He backed away, quickly. 
almost falling on the ice until he was fully sprinting back to his place, slid the knife in my pocket and watched him run back to his building. Then I went up to my bedroom, told my boyfriend I just had to go pee and fell asleep. So nameless horny junkie, let's not meet again or I'll eat your face.